Can you imagine waiting the night for a meal? Going to a restaurant and waiting all night for your food? Oh, I would be horribly grumpy after that. But these guys, that's what they live for. He's being more patient than I've ever been for a meal. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's new series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go beyond the glass. This time on Beyond the Glass, we're pulling an all-nighter in search of Kool's flying gecko. When the sun sets on Indonesia, all kinds of unique species emerge. So check this out. This is like a gecko highway. It makes sense why they'd have that adaptation to be able to glide, because there's so much to glide too. It's not like they're just gonna jump and there's nothing there. There's always another overlapping tree. It's really cool and makes me think that if I were setting up an enclosure, I'd want the same overlapping, just forest highway they have here. Glorious. Oh, dude, cool, check it out. My favorite invertebrate of all times. Wow, <laughs> that is too cool. Check this little guy out, tailless whip scorpion. They're, they're very flattened in posture. They've got long feelers, and they've got these really imposing pinchers. I've seen tailless whip scorpions everywhere in the world that I've gone. In Cambodia, in the temples, in South Africa, on the aloe trees, in Arizona, in Costa Rica, in Peru on a waterfall. And the reason I like these guys so much is because they're so freaky looking. And then it turns out I learned they're totally harmless. They don't bite, they don't sting. They're just harmless, gentle creatures that look terrifying. People do keep tailless whip scorpions. When you're setting these guys up in captivity, you remember everywhere I've ever seen them, it's pretty humid, so they need that humidity. They dry out pretty quickly. And they also need room to climb around because they do use that vertical space. You can set them up in a vertical tank with like cork, and they need small prey. The cricket might actually eat them. Well, it's not a gecko, but I'm always stoked to see these guys. My favorite invertebrate, the tailless whip scorpion. Now, off to go find the fly guy. Okay, so this is really cool. This is a textbook example of an arboreal animal using an ambush posture. Right here, we have a white-lipped tree viper, and he's got an S-curve, and he's facing downward. In addition to sit and wait ambush, white-lipped tree vipers will also do caudal luring. The snake's green, but the tail at the end is red, and they'll wiggle it around, and then their prey item will think, that's a delicious worm. These vipers are leaf green. They look a lot like a vine, which is another reason to always look where you put your hands when herping. Can you imagine waiting the night for a meal? Going to a restaurant and waiting all night for your food? Oh, I would be horribly grumpy after that. But these guys, that's what they live for. They just sit, they wait, they lure, they trick, they feed. This is Kool's flying gecko. Here in Indonesia, pigs might not be able to fly, but some of the reptiles do. If you look closely at his toes, they're webbed. His tail, it's frilled. His stomach has extra skin. All that skin serves a function. It's so when he decides, I'm done with this place, let's blow this popsicle stand, he can jump and glide from tree to tree effortlessly. It's an arboreal gecko. They inhabit the trees, not super common on the ground. It's very humid here, I'm gonna take some measurements, but imagine they're also a pendulant water drinker, meaning when you live in the tree, there's not a whole lot of puddles in trees. So that dew and that moisture buildup is what they're gonna count on. So now that we found one here in the wild, we'll get the exact parameters for maximum success in captivity. I'm gonna let this one go, and take my measurements, but trip well done. All right, little guy. Okay, one thing I will note, 
for a setup, you wanna make sure you have plenty for them to climb on because that ground space in the tank isn't gonna offer them that much. Is that of course, the higher up the tree, he's kinda got a built-in thermal gradient here. So you might want some mild gradient. Our temperature's at 78 degrees, our humidity's at 90%. So this isn't a really heat-loving species. They're pretty thin too, so I can imagine you could accidentally overheat them pretty easy, so be careful with that. Lots of moisture here, missed them all the time. This texture, almost identical to the backside of a piece of cork bark. I'd imagine they'd take advantage of that. Not hanging out on sticks and leaves as much as just gripping that tree. So cool. Not too many animals adapted to this kind of surface. 